Hello, kid, and welcome to Kid Time Storytime Outer Space Edition, where we are spending some time with the moon. Isn't she beautiful? Hard to believe that she is four and a half billion years old. Four and a half billion years old? Yeah. Wow. She does look really good. But wait a minute. Didn't we just get to the moon like 50 years ago? Yes, that's right. Whoa. Must have been pretty lonely up there. Yeah, I know. That's why when we landed, it was one giant leap for friendship. Wow. Yeah, I totally get that. You know what? I'm really already feeling this book because I'm considering a career as an astronaut. So please read. Okay, I will. That career choice of yours sounds, well, out of this world. Was that a joke? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so let's see. Moon's first friends, a tribute to that landing on the moon. Ooh, scan this code to hear the countdown to Apollo 11's liftoff. We're gonna do that at the end. We're gonna do it. Check it out. Oh, and I really like what they say to us here. This is SLH, Susanna Leonard Hill. She wrote the book and she's dedicating this book for everyone, that's us, everyone who dreams of great things, reach, for the moon and from ep elisa she did the pictures to all those who have a mission in their heart and who fight to complete it no matter what and you know big missions don't come any bigger than wanting to reach the moon am i right that's right let's take off the moon was queen of the night sky Look at that beautiful night sky. She was so bright that everything she touched glowed with silver light. But after many, many years had passed, she was lonely. If only someone would visit me, she said. Look at that. She could see herself reflected in the waters of the earth, looking down from her beautiful perch up above. Hello down there, she called to the lumbering dinosaurs. Ooh. Ooh. If you come up here, you won't feel so heavy. You'll feel lighter than air. But the dinosaurs, well, they stayed where they were. They weren't the flying kind, I guess. Certainly not the outer space flying kind, staying a little closer to Earth. Under the moon's watchful eye, the surface of the Earth changed. That's right. I mean, four and a half billion years, things will change. The moon saw glorious new creatures come and go like saber-toothed tigers, roar, mastodons, roar, you know, that's like the early elephant, woolly mammoths, dodo birds, whales, rhinoceroses, and elephants. These we still have. And there she is watching over things. But they all stayed earthbound and rarely looked up to her in the night sky. Crickets, crickets crickets, crickets, all alone. But then, ah, she saw something new. At night, people conjured fires like tiny stars. Oh, there are millions of stars for you up here, she offered. But the people, they stayed right where they were. The moon watched as she circled and circled the earth. On the wide sweep of the hot Sahara, the Egyptians built stone pyramids that towered towards the sky. Oh, they're trying to reach me, she marveled. But though the pyramids were mighty, well, they never came nearly high enough to reach the moon. Perhaps, well, perhaps they didn't see her, she thought. There they all are working hard. Oh, they see her. They just can't imagine being able to get that high moon. There's no technology yet, but just wait a few million years. Well, she spun and twirled from new moon to majestic silver pearl and back again, showing off for the people below. That's right, from new moon to waxing moon to waning moon to half moons to full moons. There's all this terminology for all the moons, and it's actually, if you want to know, it's uh, back here. We have the new moon, the waxing crescent, the first quarter. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm sorry. We go on. She spun and twirled and, and, and showed off for the people below, but still no one came. She watched as down on earth, people came up with all kinds of ways to get from one place to another, but they did not sail 
or drive or cycle or float to the moon, not even by the biggest hot air balloon they could make. Then, on a windy day in North Carolina, ooh, hope springs new. The first airplane flew above a beach. Oh, you're doing great, encouraged the moon. You just need to fly a little bit higher. But the people on Earth only traveled to, well, basically visit one another. Was it possible that they didn't know she was there? She's been so patient and glowing and moving around. How can no one notice? At high noon, the moon slipped purposefully between the earth and the sun, blocking all the daylight. Then she slid aside again, allowing the sun to shine through. Ha! No one could have missed that, she thought. No, not a lunar eclipse. She definitely got their attention. But still, no one ventured away from earth. Oh. Would she ever have a visitor? Good thinking though with the eclipse, they definitely noticed you. Just when the moon was losing hope, the people on earth began, began to experiment with what? Rockets, rockets. And the moon watched with great interest, but the humans, well, we still had a lot to learn. Yeah, there he is designing things. But one day, the moon's hope soared, a chimpanzee, ah, 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 in a mercury capsule rocketed towards her. <gasps> a visitor at last. Look at that, there's a monkey in there. I wonder if his name is Curious George. You'd have to be curious to be a monkey in space. But alas, oh, the monkey returned to Earth without reaching her, but oh, so close. And then one hot July day, a tremendous rocket stood upon a launch pad with two small spaceships perched on top. The countdown began. 10, count with me, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, lift off! The crowd goes wild. At 30 stories high and weighing 6 million pounds, woo, that's heavy, the rocket rose into the air amid an explosion of flames, slowly at first, and then faster and faster. The rocket fell away in stages, letting weight go. But the two spaceships hurtled to the moon. They kept coming. They're coming, the moon said. They're actually coming. I'm so excited for the moon. Look at her. She's been lonely for so long. One of the spaceships remained at a distance, circling. But the other came closer and closer until at last its spindle legs touched down. Welcome, she greeted the men who emerged from the ship. Ooh, look at that. They're standing on her face. She doesn't mind though. The astronauts walked across her surface with great bounding steps, you know, leaping, leaping, great big steps because there's, well, there's no gravity. They can just sort of take a big flying leap. And, and they made these great bounding steps that made her dust poof, bloom. They seemed delighted with how far they could travel with each stride. The moon gave them gifts of moon rocks and dust. Take these back to Earth, she said. Then even though I can't visit you, a part of you will be there. The men left her a present in return, a handsome plaque that read, Here, men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon, July 1969 AD. We came in peace for all mankind. They also left her a beautiful American flag with red and white stripes and a scattering of white stars on a blue background, just like her atmosphere. Look at that. That's Neil Armstrong and that's Buzz Aldrin. Those were the first two men to walk on the moon. Look at that. And she's looking at them. And inside there, there's another astronaut. His name is Michael Collins. Too soon, the astronauts had to leave. Goodbye, said the moon as the ship floated away into the starry distance and they're waving bye bye. Come back anytime. Look at that, she looks so cute. She's wearing the flag like a little hat. She sighed with happiness. At last, someone had visited from Earth that she'd been watching for so long. 
And now she had hoped that it would happen again and again. Maybe one day you will visit her. This is, you see, this is a vehicle that actually landed, this module landed on the moon. And here, amazing factoid, perfect for a budding astronaut. Okay, I'm listening. Okay, NASA, which sent this beautiful rocket ship Apollo 11 up to the moon, was established in 1958. It's part of the government and it's in charge of science and technology related to airplanes and space. What does that mean? Well, that means that they make satellites and they send probes into space and they study the solar system. They explore the planets and asteroids and oh, so many things. Do they look for aliens? Well, they don't officially say so, but probably. Well, I'm guessing. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool. I want to be an astronaut to find aliens. Okay, well, I mean, I'm sure that that's a mission uh, in the future. Uh, let's see. Some out-of-the-world facts. Shall we have some of those? It takes about a month for the moon to get all the way around the Earth. Now, the moon does not give off any light. Even though we see her glowing, that moon glow is actually the light of the sun reflecting off of her white, beautiful surface. Earth's moon is the fifth largest one in our solar system. I guess the fifth largest moon. Other moons are out there for other planets. Now, the moon... In relation to the Earth, you're wondering, are they the same size? No, it's about one-fourth of the Earth's size, 25% of the size. Oh, and then here, just chock full of great stuff about the Apollo 11 voyage. And there they are. Those are the astronauts, Buzz Aldrin, uh, Neil Armstrong, and Michael Collins. He's the one that we hear about the least because he was the one who stayed inside the rocket taking care of stuff while these guys were bouncing around and putting the plaque in and putting the flag. And there's Buzz Aldrin with, with one of the most famous photographs ever. And well, so far, they're the only two so far who've been on the moon. But, you know, maybe somebody will be wearing a space suit. Somebody pink. Maybe. Maybe one of you out there will go with somebody pink. Yeah, you could be my co-astronaut. Exactly. Go up in a rocket and go up into the sky. And it gives, oh, I love this book. You can um, freeze it and then read all the details. The first stage of, you know, how you remember how things were coming off? It explains everything that was coming off. Talks about the lunar module, the one that actually landed on the surface of the moon. Talks about the trip home. Let's see, after traveling back through space for more than four days, they finally re-entered Earth's atmosphere and splashed down safely into the ocean. Just, it's just a simple four-day trip to the moon. Ha ha ha, no big deal. Now, do you want to hear? I do. All right, let's see if this works. I bet it'll work. It says here, scan this QR code to listen to Neil Armstrong's first words on the moon. So I'm going to scan it on my phone. Right there. You see me scanning? Okay, it's telling me to open this thing. Now. There's the first words. Landing. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. One small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. Well, that was so cool that we got to actually hear the words. It's like magic in this book. I know. It's incredible what they think of with technology. And a lot of technology, you know where it comes from. From outer space? Well, yes, from the space program. Because they have to come up with so much technology to be able to do amazing things like... Visit the moon? Exactly. That they come up with all kinds of inventions that then serve us down here. Like being able to even have cell phones and computers. That all came from the space program. Wow. I can't wait to do something cool like that and discover cool things and meet aliens and stuff. Yeah, I want to be Moon's uh, new friend. Uh-huh. And then maybe I can go to Mars, meet some aliens, have a nice house in the in some other planet. That would be cool. Yeah, I have big dreams. Big dreams. I think we should all have big dreams. And remember what they told us in the book. Do you remember? I want to remind you before we go. For everyone who dreams of great things, reach for the moon and fight to complete the mission in your heart, no matter what. Because if man can make it to the moon, you can make it to your own big, beautiful set of goals. See you next time, kid, on another intergalactic kid time story time.